So good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, I've got this slide up here, but there are no other slides for tonight. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is I want to talk about lessons that I've learned. And, um, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, that I have been doing this for... Um, <laughs> um and it's i've you know although i have found success in the market um it didn't happen easily so i'm going to talk a lot about the things that um caused me some trouble um as i was coming up to see if that would be helpful to you and feel free to an ask questions um to, um, you know, if I can help you specifically in your trading, that's what we're here for tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and just have a chart up here. Um, you know, one of the very first things that um, messed me up for a long, long time, and it was over analysis. Hey, Mara, yeah, doing well. My surgery's healing up hobbling around but it's healing up so I'm doing well hope everything was well with you as well um, <clears throat> when we um, when we first start out in trading and we decide we're going to be technical traders um, well show of hands type a Y how many of you went down a rabbit hole of technical analysis? A rabbit hole that just really never ends. And yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty common problem and it plagued me for quite a while. You know, I was taught by um a person um who who became my mentor um in trading. Um, with some very simple things in mind. Um, you know, even down to um, the reason I use white background charts and black and white candles. First off, I can see the charts better. When I, um, I can see the patterns in the charts better when I use black and white candles and with a white background. And I know that goes against everything the industry is telling you right now. You need all of these fancy colors. You need all kinds of things going on. But do me a favor on this, guys. Uh, jot this down as a note for you to go check yourself. If you go out and search how the human being sees, we'll find out that we have almost twice the recognition, twice the rods, in our eyes to be able to identify black and white than we do color. And consequently, we are able to pick out patterns in black and white charts much easier than um, any other pattern or any other chart out there. And I learned that from day one, setting in a class at an airport with about 40 other people for the very first class my mentor had ever taught me. Now, here's the thing I want to tell you. She, um, I wish she'd have told me this then because maybe I would have listened. But trading was the only job she had ever had her entire life. She had never held or needed to hold any other job because she made her entire living from trading. And she told me this day one. White background charts, black and white candles. When we started getting into technical analysis. Well, here's some of the charts I created. 
you can see how well I listened um, on following white background charts and black and white candles. And I went for years fighting this because the technology was here. You know, you got you can't tell me that um, that um, I'm going to identify things easier. Look at how c cool these are. I, I mean, amazing. Um, I would put tons and tons of indicators on a chart. I'm going to show you when I show this and every once in a while. And it is um, the messiest chart you have ever seen in your life. I can show you several of those. But um, this is a chart that I use for years. I, I know what all of this stuff means. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do to read it. Okay. But I want you to look in here, and this needs to be changed back to candlesticks, but I, I want you to look in here and I want you to see, looking at that chart, what about this chart has anything to do with studying price action, price of a chart? I mean, in some places, can you even see the price of the chart? I thought of myself as being pretty sharp um, because I went out and I learned all these technical indicators. I only not only learned the technical indicators, I learned how they were written, how the program was written, so I could customize it. So I could write custom programs, custom indicators in the system. I can tell you how in TC2000, I can tell you how to take a moving average and turn it into two colors. One moving average, two colors. Now, what did that do for me? And nothing. I learned a whole bunch of information that honestly hurt me more than it helped me in my trading because I went down this rabbit hole. I assumed if I was losing money in the market, well, it was just because I needed something, I needed that new shiny thing. I needed to go find that new shiny thing that was gonna save my bacon and, and turn me into a great trader. And honestly, what I was searching for, and how many of you would say this to be true as well, that what you really want to find is you want to find the secret sauce that guarantees you win every time and never have a loss. In fact, what we want, if the truth is told, what we want is we want the computer to take away all of our responsibility for making a decision on what is a right trade and then I just have to mindlessly follow what the computer tells me in this indicator or this whatever it is, and it's going to magically make me rich. Right? Because one of the hardest things I think to learn, and well, it was for me, is to take responsibility for my trading. Okay, and, and that means put the pressure on me. I evaluate the chart. I got to the point at some point in, during, you know, I was so stringent on this, I did not want to hear from any other person what they thought about a chart. Not, not even a little bit. Don't, don't tell, I will make that decision and that will be my decision. Because I also fell into this trap that whenever it didn't work, I blamed it on anybody else but me or anything else but me. Okay? Oh, geez. If the president would have just shut up today and not said anything, I'd have, I'd have, this would have been a winning trade. I see comments in the trading room all the time of frustration 
heard someone making a comment. I think it was on um, Walmart. Saw a comment. Just absolutely frustrated. Come on, just move. You know what? The chart doesn't care about you. It's never going to care about you. And the only thing that you can do is make a decision and then work to live with the position, live with that decision. Okay. So if you're if you're struggling in trading, and this is the thing I wish wish Martha would have told me. Okay. And that is if you're not happy with where your results are, if you're not happy with your trading, find somebody that does it well and then do what they do. Okay. Because why reinvent the wheel over and over and over if you're struggling? Find somebody that's doing it and then just do what they do. Now, I fought that for years. My mentor was telling me what to do, and I was doing everything other than what I was told to do because I, I clearly was smarter. I clearly knew more about these various things than my mentor had, but when I looked at my account, I wasn't making any money. And in frustration, I went and, and set up a meeting. And this is back in the day when you signed up for coaching. Um, you actually drove to their place and sat there with them. And she was asking me questions. Okay, where did you get into this trade? And I'd say something like, oh, somewhere, you know, somewhere around here. You know, I'd, uh, somewhere around here. Okay. Where did you get out of this trade? I, you know, uh, somewhere around here. I got stopped out for a loss. And we'd go through multiple, multiple charts like that. And the thing that woke me up more than anything else, and I've repeated this over and over and over, she looked at me. And this is somebody I really respected. She looked at me and she said, Doug, I didn't think you were stupid. Now, I was in the construction business, and I, and I can tell you this, that wouldn't have hit me harder if she'd have swung a two before and hit me straight on in the face with it. Because all of this time, I had tried to take something that I knew worked from her. But no, I was pretty sure I could, I could outsmart it. I could be better. I could do tons of different things. Watch me. Well, she watched me. She watched me make a mess of my, my trading for a long, long time. And as a matter of fact, almost went broke once. Didn't quite go broke. Almost went broke or broke my trading account. I didn't go broke, but almost broke my trading account because I was so stubborn that I had to be this fancy trader. I had to do all of these fancy things in the market and I didn't have to do any of them. Okay, so I went back to the drawing board. You guys see every day if you're in the right way options room, I use a black and white chart. As a matter of fact, I use a black and white chart just like this with no indicators on it and I draw lines on it. Support, resistance, and trend. And that is my favorite chart because it requires me to look at price. How many of you guys have ever been caught in the trap? You learn about some couple indicators and well, when it crosses, when this crosses here, that's the, that's the trade. When you fall into that trap, okay, when you fall into that trap, you are 
essentially saying, I don't want the responsibility to determine whether this is a good trade or not. You tell me when this is a trade and I'll just blindly follow. In fact, how many of you went to your first candlestick class or learned candlesticks for the first time? And you left that class thinking, wow, I got the secret now. I know candlesticks. This is going to be like taking candy from a baby and get absolutely disappointed with it. Right? So the first rule here, or not really the rule, but the first thing that I had to correct in my trading is I had to stop trying to be the jack of all trades. The guy that knew everything about every indicator and knew all of this stuff and all, you know, man, I could analyze like you couldn't believe. Never made any money, but boy, I could analyze things. And I had to get back to just simple price action in the chart. Because, well, take a look at this chart in Walmart. Okay. Was it really that hard to make money in Walmart? I mean, look at this trend. Was it hard to make money in Walmart? Nope. It actually was pretty darn simple to make money in Walmart. And you can see it in tons of charts right now, all over the place. But what we have done is we have clouded our vision of the price action with so much gobbledygook and so many rules that we put on ourselves that we don't even know why they're there. We can't prove that they made us any money or anything, but boy, we've got to do this. When the simple fact is, guys, this chart gave lots of opportunities for an entry to make money. But we weren't looking at the chart. The big aha moment for me is when I realized that price was the most important thing in the market. And you guys will hear me repeat this over and over and over, but um, and I, and I always say it kind of like, um, price is the only thing that pays us. I, I can only get paid when price moves. I cannot get paid when two indicators cross over. Those indicators will never pay me, ever. And I can go through and pick indicators, guys. And I can cherry pick stocks to show you just, oh man, you got to have this. But then I can also go through and show you a whole bunch of times when it failed. But you don't hear that side of the equation, do you? That, you know, you actually got to work at reading the price action of the chart. But so much of the time, we don't even want to look at it. Okay. Um, Kev, yeah, I, I mean, f for me, it, um, people will ask me, how do you draw a chart? And I say, go draw 10,000 charts and then come back and ask me that question. And I really mean that because I look at a chart, I don't even need the lines on there and I can see trend. I can see the top side of the trend, the channel. I can see the support levels in the chart, resistance levels that become support, and they just fall into place here in the chart over, whoops, over and over and over again. All of these price action things mean something. Okay. All of them mean something. 
And if we're not paying attention to the basics of the chart and we're trying to fight the market and tell the market what it should do, well, we've all had pretty good experiences at this, right? We, we could create some really good tax, tax deductions thinking that we know more than the market knows. Am I wrong with that, guys? So I had to clean up my act. I had to get simple in my trading. I had to get rid of all the gobbledygook and actually study price. And the good news is, guys, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this, which is good. There's nothing special about me. There really isn't anything special about me. I'm just willing to look at the chart for what it is, not for what I want it to be. Meaning, I don't put an anticipation in here that I know anything about this chart that anybody else doesn't know. Because I drew that trend on here and everybody probably is already thinking like, well, geez, this is a bullish chart. This is, this is great. And it could be. Could be. But there's some other things in here. What about this double top right there? See that? What about the fact that that double top is coming close to failing support? <laughs> That's a good skit. No doubt about it, Steve. That's a good skit. <laughs> So I'm willing to see this chart. Yes, this could be bullish, but this also could fail this trend. And even if it does rally back up, I'm also willing to look right there and see all that price action resistance right there. It could rally up there and fail. I'm willing to see that. Okay. So when you're looking at charts, try to think about what's logical. If if we if we go back to the very basics of what we learned about trading in the peak and valley pattern, guys. And that's really where I went back to. I went back to the basics and I would take a bottoming pattern like this and I'd pull the chart back and I would study. And I mean hours, days, days on end pull a chart back and go through the price back and forth. Where's the entry signal? What's that signal going to look like? What do I need to see to find the entry signal? Back and forth, trying to define what was the entry, what was not the entry that I was looking for. And I would do it over and over and over until I found it difficult to miss the signal. Okay, over and over and over. So by doing that practice and relying on myself, no one else, ultimate responsibility, I am responsible for every trade I make. I am responsible for every mistake I make. And I take that responsibility seriously when I look at a chart. Okay. And because of that, I found success in doing some of the most simple things. Trading. I, I essentially repeat the basics of technical analysis from first day technical analysis, and I do it over and over again. I look for stocks that are trending. Right? Now the question people always come up with is, how do I know it's in a trend? Well, it's in a trend when the downtrend breaks and it holds a higher low. That's how we know. And every place beyond that point, as long as that trend holds, 
is another opportunity to follow that trade to the upside. Okay. How many of you have ever been really frustrated when you're struggling and trading and you go through and you look at charts and you may not be frustrated now, but you might after this um, because you go through and you look at charts and you realize that there are trends everywhere around you in the charts, trends everywhere. And you're not in any of them. Isn't that frustrating, guys? But all around us, there are stocks making it, making trends, holding patterns, both bullish and bearish. I'm not trading any of them. So how are you going to correct that? Remember, I can't correct that for you. Rick can't correct it for you. John can't correct it for you. 1973 Hog can't correct it for you. You are the CEO of your trading business. You have to correct it. You have to be willing to take the responsibility and plan your trade and then trade your plan. Now, you don't have to have a plan like I do. You don't have to do all the the kind of things that I do. As a matter of fact, what I would recommend, find somebody you like, start with what they do, and then modify it to make it yours. I remember me and the 1973 hog, you know, um, years back used to tell everybody, if you're not stealing something, you're not doing enough. And what we mean by that is, Take that knowledge that someone else has out there and offers it to you. Take it and use it and learn from it and improve. Okay? All right. So when you look at that chart, you are making the decision in the trade and you are being responsible for the position. I, I tell this all the time um, in the room that if Warren Buffett came here and knocked on my door, Warren Buffett's in Nebraska, he, you know, and stopped by and he said, hey, Campbell, he calls me Campbell, if you didn't know, um, Campbell, um, <laughs> I've never met Warren Buffett. Um, <laughs> you need to buy this stock. You're out of your mind if you don't buy this stock. If I look at the chart and it's not my trade, I don't care what Warren Buffett says because I'm responsible. Okay. I'm responsible to make that decision. Is this my trade or is it not my trade? When you take that responsibility, guys, in your trading, you really don't have to make that decision whether you need someone else's opinion on a chart. You don't, because you don't want it. So how do you get there? Well, first thing, you have to do lots of practice. Okay, I don't know if that helped, Kev. Um, drawing the, the parallel lines or just finding those support levels in the chart. And you can take a line, draw it across the screen. And if you don't know where it is, you know, you're looking for support from up here. Where's the support? Put a line on the chart and drag it down until it connects with multiple places in the chart. Or, okay, if you can't find resistance, put a line on the chart. We're down here. Where's the next resistance in the chart? 
push that line up until it makes contact with multiple places in the chart where there is resistance price is showing that resistance okay when you see uptrends draw them when you see downtrends draw them They're everywhere in charts. Okay, it's not hard to find them. We see them everywhere. Okay. <clears throat> but you got to do the work, right? So what I had to do is I had to <clears throat> change everything up. First, I had to knock that chip off my shoulder that I was the smartest technical trader in the world. I could write my own code. That, that didn't mean anything. That was garbage. I had to learn to read charts and seriously learn to read charts and focus on the right things, the important things, not the things that didn't matter. Okay, And the only thing that really matters <clears throat> is price. Because price is your number one indicator, and it's the thing that we look at the least in, our, in trading. Most people just don't look at it. They want an indicator. They want somebody else to tell them this is a trade. They want whatever it is. They don't want the responsibility for making the decision for this trade. Okay. Price is king. And that was a revelation to me after all those years of struggling. Geez, there's trends everywhere. All I have to do is find a stock that's in a trend and then wait for the next entry. That's all I have to do. I don't, I don't have to predict anything. See, this is one major fact that everyone needs to understand that of all of the money in the market, okay, 80% plus is controlled by the institutions. I think I heard the last stat, something like BlackRock themselves, just BlackRock, have $13 trillion in pension funds in their system. $13 trillion. Okay. You and I as retail traders, I don't care if you're trading a $2 million account. You mean nothing to the market. Okay, nothing. The best we can do when the institutions control that much money is find something that they are making trend and wait for the next entry into the trade. And, and that was a big aha moment for me. Wait a minute, I don't have to predict this stuff? No, I didn't have to predict for it. I had to wait. I had to be patient. One of my favorite quotes from Charlie Munger, who's passed away, but Charlie Munger has a quote that says, um, trading isn't about, is not about the buying and selling. It's about the waiting. And he's absolutely correct. It's about waiting for that trade signal to occur so that you can find your way into the trade. Well, and you know, and isn't that the truth, Steve, that one of the major reasons people fail is because they have no discipline and no patience in their trading. I'm here in front of my computer. I need to trade right now. I need to trade right now. 
Now, I didn't spend an hour in front of my computer last night looking at charts so I could be prepared for today, but I need one right now. And that's a dangerous attitude to approach the market. In fact, the institutions love it. Re remember this, guys. Everyone trading the market, Steve, me, Murrah, Rick, BlackRock, doesn't matter. Our job, my job, is to take your money. Okay? Everyone in the market is after your money. Okay, so what are you going to do to be better than the next guy in the market? The next gal in the market, the next institution? What, what's your edge? Well, my edge is very, very simple. It's price action. Okay. So I'm going to show you this, guys, and I've showed this uh, thousands of times. In an upside trend, how do you know a trend is going up? Stock has to break the downtrend and make the first higher low. The first higher low starts an uptrend. There is no uptrend until the first higher low is placed. Crossing up the downtrend is not a trend. That's an impulse wave. As we've seen many times, guys, crosses up, comes right back down. Over and over and over. I'm watching Pfizer for a potential entry into the trade. The last time I was looking at it is right over here. Here's my drawings. Waiting for the higher low to come in. Can't do it. Can't hold it. How many times has that occurred? Over and over and over. It's been occurring all kinds of times. Okay, so my job is to be patient. My job is I need this stock. If this is my current trend here in the chart, break that trend, hold a higher low. Then I can start an upside trend. And only then can I start an upside trend. Okay, the same is true for a downside trend. Stock's been moving up, stock crosses down, rallies back, puts in a lower high, and that begins the downtrend. It's always the same. Now you can have double bottoms, double tops, head and shoulders, all those kind of things. But remember, the head and shoulders, if you're looking at this for the bigger head and shoulders, what am I still waiting for in here? I am waiting for the higher low. It's always that way. It'll always be that way. And on every time frame you trade, it's always the same. Okay? Because trends can't start any other way. Even if you have, and I'll have people argue, no, you, you, you double bottoms, double, bo double bottom. It's got, you know, we see the double bottom all the time. And that right there doesn't create the trend. The trend occurs when it holds the higher low. Okay? That's an impulse wave up. Unless that holds the higher low, and we've seen plenty of occurrences where we have bottoms that fail and continue going down. doesn't hold and it fails goes to new lows that's an inverted head and shoulders Doug that's got to be a great pattern no it doesn't there's no rule out there that says it has to be 
it has to hold a higher low and be able to maintain that. Couldn't do it. There's examples all over the place in the market that we cannot predict what the market is going to do. All we can do is follow it. And if we wait for those good patterns to show themselves, it's not that hard to see them. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, set a price alert, wait for the entries. As long as that continues to maintain trend, keep looking for that, just find a trending chart, wait for the next entry, wait for the next entry, wait for the next entry. Same thing is true on a failure. Lower highs, break support. There's your short, right there. You could short that right there. Lower high failure. I like this one better personally, but teach his own. It'll always be the same way. Tesla. Tesla had a gap up this morning. Okay. In the chart, we got a little inverted head and shoulders pattern, but it hasn't broken the downtrend. Okay, so that's probably not what you wanted to hear. I okay, made a higher low there. If you got in here, congrats. You jumped into this trade below trend and at resistance, below resistance. Now you can get lucky and make money on some of those. The overall trend of Tesla is still down and showing a shooting star right at price downtrend. Okay. So this needs to break the downtrend and hold a higher low. Okay. Yeah, you're drawing out the wedge that's here. Certainly a wedge there. Okay. But there is your trend. So we have to break out of the downtrend and then hold the higher low to make a trade viable. Now you can have stocks that really sell off, okay, really sell off, and you can have higher lows underneath a bigger downtrend and run that up to that downtrend, okay. That happens every once in a while we get a stock that really sells off strong like that slams down and then you can trade this trade up to that downtrend see there after it makes the higher low and breaks the downtrend so the patterns are always the same and the lessons that i learned here guys were were some hard won lessons because and, and what it was is I had to get rid of the chip off of my shoulder. I had to stop thinking I was the, you know, the best analyst in the world and just focus on the price action of the, of the chart and learn to follow. Okay. And once you do that, you, you know how easy it is for me nowadays to set a trade and I don't even have to watch it. Um, I, I don't know if some of you know this, but I will place a trade and I won't look at it the whole day, not once. Because I'm busy teaching, doing all of these different things. I don't have time to look at it. Because I plan the trade, I set my stop, I set my target. I go do with the things I need to do. And I repeat that over and over and over and over. Market. 
Um, and it doesn't matter what strategy you apply to it. It's the same thing. It's I've done the same trades tens of thousands of times, the same price patterns. Okay, what we call the pullback opportunity, the stock has started in a trend, it's made its higher low. This is the pullback opportunity when buyers step in here. Or in the trend, we consolidate over and find the trend. Now there's some important nuances in here because I find this is happening a lot nowadays. Stock takes off and goes up huge pulls back two or three days, pops a white candle, and everybody jumps on that candle. Okay? It is not near the trend at all. And then we're surprised over and over and over. Well, that was a bullish engulfing candle. That's got to be a good trade. And then the stock finds its way back to trend. It happens over and over and over in the market. Okay, because we're not respecting the price action. We want to trade so bad today, and we're only looking at the hard right edge of the chart. And because we see that bullish engulfing or that pattern that we like, now's, now's my time. And we don't recognize where the trend is. We don't recognize where support is. We don't even want to acknowledge the resistance to the right. Okay. Big stretch away from trend. Where's trend, guys? You tell me, where do you see trend? This is way out of the box. Now, it can continue to extend for a period of time, but what we know is almost always going to occur. That trend cannot last for long because it wears out. Okay? And it will come back. And it'll come back usually in an ugly way when it does come back. Or it does one of these where we will consolidate for a long period of time. Okay, after breaking through this up here, the high probability of geo is this is going to find some place in here and it's gonna back up and it'll rest or it will fall substantially. It'll rest for a long period of time to consolidate that move. Okay. That was the current trend. We run that risk right now on BITO. Don't know this yet, but we could find a lower high in here. Because we broke support when we backed up here. And it backed up hard and fast. If it can't get back through this high up here, watch for that potential failure. And I say potential, guys, because I don't know what the future is. I have to see the chart for what it is, not for what I want it to be. Okay? So try to eliminate as many of the indicators and things out there as you can from your chart. Simplify your trading. I've got a person in the room that is trading in right way options that only looks for the pop out of the box pattern. Only one pattern, pop out of the box pattern. Okay, inside a trend. Close today, a trade today for 45% gain. He only watches a list of 10 stocks. And his win-loss ratio this year is above 70% winners. 
He does something simple and he repeats it over and over and over. Okay, what I find that we do today, and it's technology that does this, and it's all of the, it's all of the noise, all of the noise. There's so much noise around us. There's so much clutter around us that we may have really good intentions. We may study hard in the evening, and as soon as, tell me if anybody's got this problem, as soon as the market opens and all the bells and whistles are going off and all the excitement's going on, things are chasing and popping and running, and all of your focus disappears. It's like a dog seeing a squirrel. Boom, and you can't think of anything else because you're in a rush to chase that squirrel. Right? And all of the rules and the guidelines and everything that you have good intentions are go out the door because we're, we're, we're filling our world. We're trying to chase everything moving in the market. Okay. I'm looking for the most touches in here on this trend. Okay, how many times do I get a touch of this trend? like that how many the more touches you get the stronger the trend okay so you draw a downtrend along here how many times do we touch that line okay And because I'm keying in off of these low points, this breaks this downtrend and comes back up into here and holds that support, crosses up and holds the higher low, there's a potential entry signal. Okay, here's the next potential entry signal right there, stops right underneath there. because good trades will always be somewhere near trend and support, at least for me. It doesn't matter, Trader X. Pick one and stick with it. Like the same thing people will tell me, yeah, but Doug, Rick uses a three exponential on the high. Okay, fine. If that's what you wanna use, pick it and use it. Think about it. It doesn't really matter. We get, we get so bogged down in the things that don't matter because I don't care if you go logarithmic or if you go a linear scale or if you go algorithmic or whatever. Just follow the same chart. Just pick it and stick with it. Learn to read that chart. Don't change it up all the time. Learn to read that chart. Because all we're doing is following price. It doesn't matter if you use Heiken Ashi. It doesn't matter what you use. Pick a chart and stick with it. Pick a time frame and stick with it. Simplify your trading. Don't overcomplicate it. Okay. Like I said, what do we look for? We look for the first higher low. This broke down and broke the support. So this has to come above that support to make the higher low. There's the trade entry. Okay. Breaks through this resistance, comes back to trend. There's the trade entry. Okay. And you could give me any chart, and it's going to be the same. 
if you're willing to look at the chart, if you're willing to see what the chart is trying to show you. So simplify your trading. Get as simple as you can, as you feel comfortable with, and then try to simplify some more. Because I know this to be fact. When you eliminate all of those distractions and you focus more on the chart, you'll win more trades. Okay. You'll just, you'll be in the right zone to pick up a trade. Eliminate the clutter. Eliminate all of those things that you think are a have to do. If you can't prove that have to do doesn't pay you money. Okay. Years ago, I was so, I mean, I would have fought you if you'd have said something bad about my stochastics or MACD. Dude, you don't know what you're talking about. These are the greatest things ever. And then I proved to myself, finally, they don't make me any money. I would have died on the sword defending those indicators. Okay. Hey, take care, Steve. Have a good one. Get some rest. But when I eliminated those things, it didn't change anything. The price action was the price action. Okay, how many of you use Stochastics, MACD, CCI, you know, uh, the plethora of, of all of these indicators out there and still are struggling to make money? And you're just dead sure that you got to have to have them. You got to have them. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I eliminated that stuff. And I make more money now than I ever did. I don't have the distractions. I don't have something telling me that this is a trade other than price. Okay. So think about that in your trading. How can you smooth, uh, you know, streamline things? And the next thing I want to tell you, I've already got an hour here. But the next thing I want to tell you that was extremely important to me is decide what kind of trader you're going to be. I was trying to, I said jack of all trades. I wanted to know every pattern, every candlestick pattern, everything. I wanted to trade them all. I was going to be expert in everything. And the truth is, guys, nobody can. Okay. And, you know, I wanted to be expert in everything, but I wasn't successful in anything yet. I wasn't making money. So I started becoming very focused in to just a couple things. Be the best you can be on the pullback opportunity trade and the pop out of the box pattern. And guys, that's all I do. And it doesn't matter what time frame you choose to trade. I use the exact same patterns trading a 133 tick futures chart, Dow futures chart. So far this year, I'm up $22,000, I think is what I saw today. Trading a 133, I mean a 333 tick chart. I do the same patterns there as I do on my daily charts, my weekly charts. It's the same thing every time. Okay, so all I really try to do is be an expert on a couple repeatable patterns in the market. I have made a career doing some of the easiest stuff in the market. It's a repeatable pattern that repeats itself with a high percentage win rate. And I just work to be the best at that because you know, you can pick anything you want in the market. You don't have to like what I do. Pick anything you want in the market, but get good at something first. Okay? Get good 
at something first. Get successful. Start making some money. Because, you know, I, I'll tell you this, guys, that with what I do in those patterns that I trade, as your account grows, I have found I don't want to do anything else. Because all I have to do as my account grows is trade a bigger trade and I make more money. I do the same things over and over and consistently grow my account doing the same things over and over. So try to eliminate that noise and this, I got to check this and this has got to be right and this has got to be crossing over this and this, no, no. Get focused in on something simple that you can repeat over and over and over. And you'll get more production out of your trading. Okay? Don't be distracted by all of the noise around you. Just focus in on the chart. Focus in on what your job is here to do today. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, but get everything right today. Um, alpha, yeah, um, little hammer pattern right there. The way I would draw this chart right now. Whoops. Move too fast, grab the wrong thing. There's the upside trend. It's catching some support right through here. Get there. So we hammered off of that area. Your next resistance in the chart is up here. Remember, a hammer is not necessarily a buy signal. It needs to follow through. Okay. And you want to keep in mind on this chart, it's possible it could go a couple, three more days to fill in that move to the trend. So if you plan this trade, you've got to get your stop underneath here. And you got to give it enough time to complete that trend. Okay. That's possible. Well, I don't know. It's way different. It's possible that um, there's a bad tick here in the market or something on this. But, yeah, that's the way it shows here today. I mean, it shows the open... 2370 yeah um, the low is 2325 um, yeah so um, could be could be a post dribble down um, but it bounced back up here, so could have just been some, some volatility in it. But whatever your chart is, follow your chart. Okay. Okay. Follow your chart. It doesn't, you know, if, if you see it, that there's a little candle there, and then follow that chart and make that chart perform. Okay. What does that have to do to be a good trade to you? Now, with this tail, I would look at this trade this way, and this is just me. If I buy it here, my stop loss is here, and the next resistance is here. that a good trade it may be if you have the assumption that it's going to break out of there a lot of congestion in that area it may break out of there but the way my chart shows me in here I'd probably look for a better trade Oh, you're welcome, man. No problem at all. Okay. 
Um, but yeah, that's what you want to look for. You want to look for that pullback, that consolidating pullback over to the trend. Trend established in here. Oops, didn't mean to grab that, but your trend was established in here. Okay. So um, when it comes to planning your trades, I am, and I know Rick doesn't do this, and, and that's fine. You don't have to do what I do. But um, when I have a trade, there's always a stop based on the price action. And I know how much risk I'm taking on every trade to my stop loss. And if it's beyond my risk tolerance, I don't take it. And I don't care who tells me it's a good trade. If it doesn't fit me, it's not my trade. I plan every single trade I'm in. And I get this, I get this feedback. I don't have time for that planning jazz. Okay. But guys, I've done this for 20 plus years do, using the 3 8 trap. And I don't need the 3 8 trap. I can tell you this is setting up as a 3 8 trap. That was a 3 8 trap, and I don't even have to see it. You know, if I put it up on the 3 8 trap, you'll see there's the 3 8 trap, and there's the 3 8 trap setting up. Okay. It's all in the price action of the chart. And I've done this with a 70, better than 70% win-loss ratio for 20 years running because they do the same thing over and over. I'm not, I don't aggressively trade anything. I don't have to aggressively trade it. I don't want to aggressively trade anything. I do the same thing over and over. Okay. Now I'm not telling you that what I do is right for you. Okay. You may have to build your own mousetrap or Take what you learn from here, from me, from Rick, or whatever, and build your own trap um, that works for you, that sets up the things that you see in the market. Okay? But please do me that, do me this. Pick one or two things and work to be the best at it. Because if you drill down, into something simple that's repeatable, that's all you ever need in the market. It's all you ever need because if it repeats itself over and over, you just do the same thing every time. And trust me on this, guys, it's so much easier. You'll enjoy your trading a whole lot more because there's not all this angst um, people listen to me. I win money. I lose money, just like everyone else. And it doesn't bother me. I, I don't like losing money. But I'll close a trade for seven, eight thousand dollars, and it's just another day. Because I just traded the same trade that I've traded tens of thousands of times that wins 70% of the time. And that's all I did. I just repeated it over. I think if someone told me, okay, you can only have one, what would you do? you only had one pattern you could trade, I'd probably trade the pop out of the box pattern. That's the only thing I'd look for in charts. That all, that's all I'd do. Because oftentimes the pop out of the box pattern will give me lower risk entries. I don't have to risk as much to take the pop out of the box on a lot of patterns. And, and I would just work to be the best pop out of the box pattern trader that I could be. Finding them setting the trade, and then looking for another one because they repeat so often, okay? Um, well, if, if it's a pop out of the box, pop out of the box requires at least 
four days in consolidation. So we certainly have that. Okay. And I can tell you after a long consolidation in such a narrow range here in the chart, what I would have to do on this is it's going to have to either break out and hold a higher low or it's going to have to break down and hold a lower high. Because we could pop out of this box in reverse. I mean, look look right here how many times we've stretched down below and end up with tails, stretch up above and ends up, end up with wicks. After a certain point in time, it's got to show me something in a chart. Clean up its act. Take a look at Tiva. Okay. It's got to show you something after a period of time. So finally, after all of this consolidation, it popped. But you can see right here, see this one right here? If, if you told me I can only live, I'll, I'd have to make my entire living on the pop out of the box pattern. I'm looking for that trade right there. It's moving right along the trend. It's a very low risk entry into the trade. That's the trade I'm going to look for. And you can see this here is really not that much different. Okay, this one right here, it can popped up, went high, pulled back, and then rested. There's your entry. Four days in consolidation. Out of the box. Okay. If we take a look at the BMY trade that I'm in, there was my alert. Shot up, broke the downtrend, held the higher low, got into the trade. I took 25% profits on this in a few days, still holding half of the position, and I've got short calls against it. I do, I do exactly what I say. In fact, people will probably tell you that I'm frustratingly consistent. There's the pattern, wait for the trade. There's the pattern, wait for the trade. I do the same things every time. And then there really is no question for me. It's, it's black and white. Boss up with resistance, break out of a downtrend, catch the higher low in here. So you got to make that call. Is that the higher low and make that trade? Could be. Could have to rest a few more days, but it could be. And I never know. I never know. I don't worry about the perfect entry. I worry about the pattern. There's my entry into that pop out of the box pattern. Here's my entry into that pop out of the box pattern. I just repeat it. Okay. So it doesn't matter what chart you look at. the patterns are the same. They have to be in a trend. Okay, here's a here's a, a really great example where the chart slides past its trend but it held this support in here. We rallied back up and notice this could be a double top. It's also possible this could be the higher low. We've got a little support in there that we bounced off of, it could be the higher low. So show me something to follow through here, and then you look for the potential break of that resistance in the chart. If a stock, here's a really great example of what I was talking about before. We shoot up strong, we rest a little bit, there that nice little big white candle shows up, and we don't recognize the fact how far away we are from the trend. We hop on that trade, and it comes back to trend. That pattern is showing up in the market over and over and over. 
And I think one of the reasons it is, is I think the institutions have figured out that if they can pop a signal in there, they can get a whole bunch of people to buy it so they have an exit in the trade. Um, NU, NU is setting up. Darn it, I did it again. Going too fast there. So, upside trend. Broke out of here. There's your pop out of the box that's forming right here. So you set a price alert and wait for the trade. Okay, look to the left. Is there any big resistance? Why are we resting here? You guys see why we're resting here? Look at the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. Breaking through that resistance and holding in here Pretty good sign. I'd be watching that chart. ISRG. Oops. I gotta learn to type one of these days. Um, ISRG pushing up. I would have to draw that this way. Yeah. It's trying to break through to all time highs. So I've gotta be willing to see this resistance that is a little pop out of the box but is it a good trade is it worth taking this much risk to your stop if it goes up here and fails again so on this chart I see the pop out of the box but I would probably say to the chart break out hold and then I'll trade you oh just just wait for it find a trend that's trending wait for the the best entry wait for the entry you can take this one if you can take that stop and you assume it's going to break out and you you've got confidence in it then that might be a trade if you can take that risk to the stop if you can't take that risk to the stop, or if you're worried about that resistance, make it break out and then look for your entry. Because here's the thing, guys, and this is really important, Bob, pay attention to. If you buy it here or you buy it here, about the same price. This here might have a lower risk entry. You ever think about that? We're in so rushed to get a trade, but if we were just patient, we might get a better trade. And almost at the exact same price. Toll. Toll could be setting up. Got a minimum of four days. If you look at trend, it may still have to rest a little bit more. There's your support underneath. Let's look over here. Blue sky highs. Beautiful upside trend. Holding. Resting in this pattern. Set your alert. Wait for the trade. Okay. Don't anticipate an entry. See, we don't have to predict with what I'm doing here make the trade come to you pop okay now i'm taking the trade the reason i'm so disciplined with that guys when i was full-time building houses i couldn't watch the market at all during the day i left the house before the market opened i was never home until after the market was uh, closed and so what i would do is i would find this chart and I would place what's called a stop limit order. I don't have time to talk about or teach it to you tonight, but this would be the buy stop limit order and I would, or the high price, and I would move that price up. And I re would require the stock to be moving up when it filled my trade. And then I would have another order in above that and say, 
if it gaps above here, don't fill me. Call the stop limit order, buy stop limit order. And so I couldn't watch it at all during the day. As soon as my trade was entered, the stop loss would drop in automatically. So I would set this trade never looking at it. And when I say make the trade come to you, I was literally doing that. I was requiring the stock to rally before it entered my trade. Made it go up to trigger the trade. So if this has to wait, and doesn't go till Tuesday next week, it doesn't matter to me. Um, Tesla, Tesla after this big pop, it can, obviously it can do many things here. Um, if it can hold this new support, this break back above support, it could rest back in here and have a tight enough pattern in here underneath that trend that it could pop in here and it could be an early buy before breaking the downtrend. If it just rests back and holds that support for a few days, it could pop right there and be an entry into the trade. That's awesome, trader. Awesome. And see, by knowing that trader X, if you look around the market, that pattern is everywhere, isn't it? Some of them are a little bit wider like that one is. Some of them are tighter. You really, if you can master that, you can trade that on every time frame chart, weekly chart, daily chart, intraday chart. You can repeat that pattern over and over and make as much money as you want. You could be the best pattern trader on the box pattern like that. never do anything else and make all the money you want to make in the market you don't have to chase around trades you don't have to predict anything you just follow the chart now back to Carol on this if this were to go ahead and break on out go ahead and break on out and then rest and pull back then look for your entry Um, yes, the LTA scanner has a pop out of the box pattern identifier. Yep. You're using the 3 8 trap, and I think you're using the 3 8 trap mostly with the Hike and Ashy. So, using the Hike and Ashy on the daily, you can see this isn't ready yet. Okay. Just make it be ready. If it's going to come back up out of that downtrend, just make it be ready. Okay. Any other charts you want me to look at quick before we go? I enjoy doing doing this, guys, because again, I would have saved myself a lot of time. If I would have just taken what my mentor taught me and said, do this. And then you can change it after you get successful. Do this. And just repeat it. I wouldn't have wasted so much time here in the market. Okay. UPS, full on collapse here. Um, there's no trade here, in my opinion, unless you're already in something. But there's no trade here. This At this point, would be chasing it to the downside. I mean, think about it. How many of you want to enter this trade here for a short and have your stop loss up here? Anybody? Big white candles, big black candles. Avoid them. Too much risk. Now, it's okay if you watch this chart 
And if this chart were to bounce back up, find a resistance high, there's your short. You know, I think I was ready. I just wasn't willing to, um, I was too young. I was, I was uh, mid twenties and, you know, already had my own business, building houses, had employees, all of those kind of things. Um, I just thought I was pretty special, you know, a little too much testosterone. And, and if I would have just wised up, it would have been a whole lot easier in my trading journey. Just, just do it. Find somebody that you like what they do and it works. Do what they do. And get the same result. Okay. Um, FMCC. Yeah, there's nothing here, um, at least not for me. Um, there's a trend here and a trend here. Okay, it's too steep in the move. Um, it needs to rest or consolidate. You know, um, come back, rest, show me a trade there. Then I'm, I'm interested, like, just like right here. Rest over, show me a trade, and then I may have some interest in it. But here, um, it's just chasing it at this point. Um, for me, it's not a... It's not a um, MPC, MPC, there's nothing here. This is a, if you're in it, you take profits. If you want to hold it long term, sell some covered calls on it. High probability this is going to pull back. But I know you were talking about this pattern right here. Catch that break, bam, money to be made. Um... Five. Five is going to be really stretched to the downside. You know, this, if you're trying to catch this as a short, it may be short. Okay. But that's really, really steep. But if you can get into a short trade here, get a follow through of that shooting star to the downside. Get anything that shows you that we're going to move on down and you can put your stop loss up here. I couldn't fault anyone for shorting anything near a resistance point in the chart. Just make that trade come to you and then you can look on down here. Where's the target? Yeah, it may only be right there. Um, somewhere right in that area. Maybe the target. Um, for that support here in the chart but it does look short yeah i'm assuming that's what you were asking i, I don't know um nvidia um possible double top okay um there was our trend we kind of slipped our trend here just a little bit and then we've got a shooting star and a bearish engulfing candle I don't typically trade double tops as a short um, so this wouldn't be a trade for me but I see the very real potential if if this follows through to the downside and we start breaking through these levels then I'm gonna look for the short Okay, the only way this can be bullish for me at this point in time, it's got to break out up here and then proves to hold.
and you know guys it's this you know apple i i when i when i told people about shorting apple i there were a lot of people that thought no apple's not going to go down um the patterns are right there Don't fall in love with the stock. Read the chart. CNX. Um, if you're in it, um, yeah, this needs a pullback. Um, I would place, there's a downtrend break right in here. So the trade, the long trade, whoops. Draw that line. The long trade would have been right here. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low. So that established the uptrend here. And now we've stretched away from that trend. So what I would need at this point in time, here, let me draw that this way. What I would need at this point in time is this needs to come back and find a support and trend. Okay, so either a consolidation over to trend, pull back to trend, Something like that. I'm waiting for, I would be waiting for that pattern. Okay. Doesn't mean it can't continue to go higher either. It could go ahead and stretch on out, but I'm still, I'm not going to chase it. There's too much risk to a stop. So wait for the next entry into the trade. Find a trending chart. Wait for the next entry into the trade. Here's a really good example right here in this chart. Stretched up. Okay, and then we just went through this very protracted pullback because we went too far, too fast. It took two months for that to resolve that to the upside. Almost three months, sorry, almost three months. Okay. So just wait for the next entry into the trade. Disney. Disney is already stretched up here. I don't know if you're looking at this for an entry right now. Trend is right here. It's pretty steep. Um, it's coming into resistance levels here in the chart. Okay, so I would be expecting a rest or pullback to occur at any time. Because it's so steep, it may have to rest a little bit longer than normal. Could get stuck in a trading range here for a little bit. Okay, if it does stay in this trend, just wait for the next entry. Okay, but this is what he was talking about. Okay. Trade those consolidating patterns. Um, that's, that's awesome that you found a pattern like that that you can identify really easy. And I love what you're doing there with your drawings too. I used to do this all the time when I would find pop out of the box patterns. I would mark them up. Now this doesn't qualify for a pop out of the box, at least in my rules. Pop out of the box requires from the top of the box to the bottom of the box, no more than 3%. This is 7.5%. Okay, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Um, um, if this works, you know, for you and it looks like it is working very good for you, then keep doing this. Just be the best at this that you can be. But when I'm looking for the pop out of the box pattern, I used to just mark them up all over the charts. So when I see that pattern, I would just draw a box around it so I couldn't miss it. And I can measure, if you notice right there on that, it tells me what the percentage is. Hard to see on that. I can move that box up so you can see it. it's 2.72%. And it's actually a little bit less than that for that range. So less than 3%, it qualifies. You can see I can take that box and move it right over here. Four candles in a tight consolidation. Okay. I'm looking for the entry into that trade. 
when it pops the top of that box. Same thing right there. Same thing right there. My minimum rule, Bob, is if I, let's say I have to risk $200 to get into the trade, I want to make sure that the resistance above is at least two to one, that I could make at least 400 for my 200 risk. At a minimum, 400. If it's less than that, I'm not interested. Okay, so when you're looking at a chart, it's really easy to find those points. So, for example, I'm looking at, um, let's say I'm trying to catch this entry. Where's the next resistance in the chart? Could be here, could be this big one up over here. So if I put a stop loss in here, am I going to have at least two times upside opportunity on this on how much I'm risking? That might be a close call on that one. But if I assume that it's going to come up to that bigger resistance, I have way more than two times. So there's my target. I'm following the trend. Trade the chart. Um, I'll show you this really quick before I go, guys. Um, this is something that I used as a planner for years. The folks at RWO have, can access this. But this is exactly what I did. It was, I told you I traded a stop limit order. So I would find a chart. I would say, what was the closing price of the day? I'd put it in there. Where's the support? And I would put it in there. Where's the resistance? And I would put it in there. And this one I used 25 cents because if you take this price here plus 25 cents, that's my buy stop entry. It meaning it had to go up at least a quarter to hit my trigger price to enter. If it went up to this price, it don't fill me. What's the limit order? Don't fill me if it's beyond that price. I didn't want to catch a gap up and have it run down all day long. And then my stop loss was 25 cents below if I use 25 cents um, my stop loss was 25 cents below the res, um, the support okay so I always calculated to if I got filled at my maximum price okay that my risk I was risking 1.5 to my stop loss and I had a potential gain to my resistance of 4.84 and I'd set the order. Those exact rules, absolute mecha absolutely mechanical. Come back to the next day, see what happened. That's how I grew my account. And I did it over and over and over and over and over. As long as it was in a trend, as long as it was one of my patterns, and I followed the rules. Okay, this was my short calculator to do the same thing for a short. So guys, to wrap up here really quick, I really want to challenge you to, if you're struggling in your trading, make the decision as soon as you can. Make the decision that I have to do something to fix this problem. I'm the one responsible. I have to fix it. You don't have to like what I do at all. You need to say, that Campbell guy is out of his freaking mind. 
Okay, and that's fine. I don't mind. Prom, t trust me. You can ask Mike Peterson. Won't hurt my feelings at all. Don't care, honestly. If this isn't for you, then go find what's for you. Okay, find somebody that's doing it and making the kind of money that you'd like to make, and do what they do. Simplify your trading. There's not one of us in here that has enough money to trade everything that's moving today, tomorrow, or the next day. We can't chase enough stocks. So narrow your field of vision. The mantra I teach over in Right Way Options all the time, trade less, make more. I don't have to trade every day to be successful. I have to trade the right trades and I'm willing to wait for them because I don't have to do that much to be successful. I just have to repeat the same patterns over and over and over. Trade less, make more. Narrow your field of vision, okay? Reduce the number of stocks that you're trying to keep track of. Only look at stocks that truly fit you, that are in a price range that you can accept, that have the volume that you can accept. Don't look at anything else. It doesn't matter. That's just noise out in the market distracting you from what you should do. Build a trading plan and follow it. A trading plan is, is nothing more than it, it can be simple. One note card. It's your work order for every single day. This is what I'm here to do. So that you're focused on the job at hand. What are you here to do? It's, it truly is your roadmap to success. So get focused into a plan and a strategy and then work to be the best at one thing first. Don't try to master everything in the market all at once. Find a pattern that repeats itself that you see easily in the market and exploit the crap out of it. And you may find that's all you need to do to be successful. If it's a pattern that you see that repeats itself over and over and over, set the parameters and rules that prevent you from taking too much risk on a trade and what you're expected to do to make profits and reach your goals. Then follow that. Okay. It took me a long time to get here. And it wasn't easy and it wasn't simple. Because I had to have that big boy conversation with me lots of times where I was screwing up. And I had to get back on task to be productive. Stop chasing this stuff around. Stop paying attention to all of this stuff that doesn't matter. Focus on the chart. Do the job. And repeat it over and over and over. Um, Alpha, um, yeah, there is. I copied that. Ed posted it. I copied it and held it. By the way, just another reminder, guys. Um, John's going to be doing that open house. Thank you, Alpha. Um, John's going to be doing that open house here um, tomorrow and Thursday from 8 to 4. So um, it, uh, no password you'll be able to get in, um, I believe, without any password. Let me give you the link. If you want to go check him out, if you have an interest in intraday trading and that's your gig, then be the best at what you, what you want to do. Be the best at that one thing. Just get really good at it. Because honestly, that's all I've done, guys. Um, and that's why I constantly say, uh, Mike Peterson will tell you, <laughs> um, 
we're standing in line at Dairy Queen to get a blizzard and he'll make the joke sometimes that they think I'm in there, you know, applying, you know, to be the janitor. There's nothing special about me. There really isn't. Um, um, I, I, I just found something in the market that I exploit over and over. And that's what I do. Um, and to me, it's easy because I've done it so much, but it took a lot of hard work to make it easy. Um, if you can find that in the market, your, your niche, your edge, once you get, grab a hold of it, never let go of it. Okay. Never let go of it because you can make as much money in the market as you want. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Thank you so much for all the kind words. And I went a lot longer than I was intending to. But again, I'm, I was trying to accomplish those really important things over 30 years of trading that I know can change a people, somebody's life in trading. And, and if you found something here that can, uh, just get to it. You know, and don't wait, get to it. Yeah, you're welcome, Mara. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Have an awesome, awesome afternoon and or um, evening. And then um, remember, tomorrow morning we got the GDP number. We've got the core PCE number on Friday. That's going to be weird. Um, Oh, excuse me. GDP is on Thursday. I'm sorry, not tomorrow. GDP is on Thursday. Core PCE is on Friday. Remember, the market is closed on Friday for Good Friday. So uh, for everyone out there, um, enjoy the holiday. Um, remember the reason for, for the holiday. And enjoy the time with your friends and family and stuff. Um, Take care. Be safe. For RWO folks, I'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning. And for everyone else, if you're signed up for the morning market prep, I'll be here tomorrow morning. And video out. So thank you all. Take care.